morning. Oh, wait, I have to plug this in. Hello? How does that work? Is that good enough? Let me see how high it goes. It goes very high. Maybe I should turn down my sound a little bit on here. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? Hello, hello, testing, testing, one, two. There, I think that I think that's probably good enough. Okay, I wanted to tell you, um, somebody asked me a minute ago about um, Sedge Meadow TP and when I built it. And so I have a live journal. For those of you that don't know, if you go to um, Nancy Today, T-O-D-A-Y, on www.livejournal.com, you can go and read everything. So here is an entry from September 3rd, 2007. I'm going to read to you, okay? This is the beginning of my Sedge Meadow TV. Feel free to go away and not listen if you don't want. Okay, Monday, September 3rd, 2007, 12 p.m. I brought my tired men back up to the house. That would be Abraham, Daniel, and Willem. Filled up my water jug, changed hats, found some rope, collected the orange survey tape, and headed back down to the sedge meadow. The grass was about a meter tall. A few, a few alder clusters separated the meadow from the stream. The 15 poles lay on the, in three groups of parallel logs. Wherever they lay, they bent over long lines of sedge grass. I had shown the boys where to put them. I had a few tops together, thinking that those would be my three main poles. I measured up 19 feet from the base of each of the 15 poles and tied some orange tape around each. Three of the lugs are way too big to use. Another one is quite bent near the bottom. I stood studying the lugs for a long time, then walked back and forth and checked the thickness of the poles at the survey tape tied spot. The spot where the tape was would be the point of the most pressure. That part of the log had to be big enough to support the weight of a hammock, as well as the other poles in the circle at the TP apex. I had five poles lined up before I finally chose three poles to be the tripod. I dragged them to the place so they were, were all parallel, until I had two facing the same way and then one facing the opposite, so that all three orange tapes were in a row. I was pretty tired. I sat in the shade of a nearby alder in the white plastic chair, drinking water from my gallon jug and watching the traffic speed by. Most of them would glance over and see me. I felt a, big sm a bit smug that they had to go back to the city and to work and school, but I was just beginning my adventure in this part of our property. Isn't that neat? That's the very beginning of Sedge Meadow GP. I wonder if there's another entry after that. But there is. That was called Selecting TP Tripod Logs. That was um, Labor Day weekend, uh, 2007. And here is the next one. 1 p.m. I used the Albany cloth rope and tied the three poles together. First, I wove the rope back and forth three times between the poles at the ties. Then I lashed between the poles until I was ready to tie them off. I left a long length of rope hanging on. I brought over my white chair and eased the poles at the junction, up onto the chair. Actually, I tried to lift the poles at the top ends and slide the chair underneath. It took a few tries, but it finally worked. Then I went to the ends of the poles and walked around with them, opening the tripod out, dividing the circle into thirds. That took more time studying to make sure they were separated. They separated the circle equally. Finally, when I was satisfied, I looked at the location of the circle. Now my next move would be decisive. Wherever I wanted the teepee to actually stand, that was go where that was going to be where two of the poles were. I went to the butt end of the other pole, lifted it up, straddled it between my knees, and walked a few steps backwards. Just as I hoped, the tripod was now up off the chair and suspended a foot above it. Having succeeded, I repeated the process, lifting the butt end, walking backwards with it, and then putting it down, making sure it wouldn't slide back to its original position. 
With each succession of backing up the pole, the entire tripod lifted higher and higher. Finally, it was where I wanted it. I tried to judge the angle of the poles to the ground to see if it was going to be high enough and steep enough. By the time the entire tripod was up and in the right place, I was ready to sit down in the shade and drink water again. I felt quite pleased as cars drove back and looked at the teepee of dark brown cedar logs, marveling at its sudden appearance. How successful I felt to have done this part all by myself. It's so much easier to work alone sometimes. The only part I really needed help with so far was lifting the three tips up and putting the chair under them. Of course, I didn't have help for that. Can you hear this properly? I do hope so. This is fun! Okay, we're going to read our next journal entry. Putting up 12 more poles to fill out the teepee. 3 p.m. I got up from my shady spot and walked around looking at the poles on the ground. One by one, I selected the poles and the fork in the tripod where I put each of them. I carried them over to the tripod, set them down so the butt end was where I wanted it to finally reside. I had a circle to make. Right now, <clears throat> I only had a triangle on the ground, but the poles would eventually form a perfect circle, I hoped. I went to the end of the new pole, lifted it up, walked closer to it as it rose above my head. Then I looked up at the end, high in the air above me, and at the tripod tips, which formed spots for poles. Then I lowered the pole into it, no, then I lowered the pole until it lodged in the fork. I repeated that twice, filling one gap between the tripod poles, then moved to the second opening in the tripod. Three of the poles weren't tall enough. They were less than 19 feet long so they'd not fit up to the top of the tripod. I had to wait where they wait till there were more poles up so the fork wouldn't be so far away anymore. It took forever to do this. It went slowly. I wanted to keep a leisurely pace so I wouldn't get worn out before I was done. I went over to sit in the shade and drink water many times. Cars of cottagers on their way back to the city passed by, often with people whipping their heads around to see what I'd done. Some of the poles were quite heavy. One was very long. I wanted to attach a Canada flag to the end of it before putting it up, but thought it would probably get wrapped up in the other pole ends. It took a lot of work to move the nine poles, nine more poles and put them in place. I enjoyed sitting and looking at my handiwork, admiring the lovely cedar wood. There's such a feeling of success and accomplishment that comes from building a teepee. I can't describe it, but it makes me feel like I've achieved something of great worth. Next journal entry, 4 p.m. I had left the long rope on the poles when I lashed the tripod poles together on the ground. Now that the teepee was all up, the rope hung down in the center. I debated taking that long pole out and putting a flag on it, but in the end I wanted the teepee tied up soon. I walked outside the teepee with the rope and then began to walk around the teepee. However, the rope caught on the lower branch spikes all over the logs. I had to find a stick to push it up high. Over beside the stream, I found two poles that weren't long enough for anything else. One of them made a perfect poking stick. It had a small fork at the end of the stick. I was able to lift the rope and push it up to the narrow neck of the teepee. I continued walking and poking, walking and poking, and finally got it around and slid up to the neck. It wasn't long enough to tie off, so I'd have to get another piece and tie it onto it later. I took a rest and then decided to go up to the house to refill my water and to go to the dump. Willem came back down with me. He helped me to remove the old metal fencing from the posts. It was in such bad condition, and we'd now need a gate, not just some wet metal wire, to keep us out. Willem didn't want to remove the fence, but I told him if someone was going to go to the stream, they were going to do it whether or not we had a fence up. He rolled it up and put it in the car. I took him back to the house. I took him back up to the house and headed off to the dump, which is where I tossed out the wire and the racks I had covered the turtle nest with early in the summer. That was to keep the raccoons away. And the next entry... Describing the Sedge Meadow TP experience. This is Tuesday, September 4th, 2007, 7.48 a.m.
You see, I would walk down there when the school bus would come. The kids would leave, and I would go down there. Of course, I don't think the bus came. I don't think they were catching the bus that early in 2007. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 11. Well, maybe they were. I'm lying in my new hammock in the new teepee. I love it here. The sky was red when I woke up. It was filled with little clouds with small spaces between them. There's probably a name for it. The spaces have gotten bigger now, but in the west, it still looks like lines and rows of gray fading to white clouds. The sun is coming out. I think I'll have to put my welcome banner to block it soon. It feels good, though. The sides on the hammock are rather high because I turned it over. I'll have to turn it back over. I will describe it here. <clears throat> the sounds? Well, a car comes from far in the distance around the corner past my road, up the hill and then down and around another corner and into the ham hamlet. I can hear it coming from far away, and then it gets louder as it gets closer. Then it passes, crosses the bridge, goes up the hill and down the other side, bends to the right a bit and continues on until it goes over the far hill and disappears. When I first hear one, it's so soft it's like a whisper. There's no sound right now. Well, that's not true. There's a whisper from either side. There are also the sounds of nature here. Crickets. It's like a solid background buzz. I can only focus on, in on them when there's no Doppler in cars. Okay, there is a slight variance, a vibration, if you will. There are also birds. I hear a chirping, probably a sparrow. I hear a whispering chirping, probably a bluebird. I hear a crow from over toward the hamlet or our house. There goes the blue, a blue jay somewhere to the west. There are large gaps between the sounds of them. I am on the extreme end of our property, the opposite from where our house is located. The highway is a stone's throw from here. Another cliché phrase, maybe 30 feet from me. I am about that far from the pilot of Woodpecker's new telephone pole. I can see he has built three oblong holes for nests. I guess there weren't many bugs in them this year. Not yet, anyway. They've flown the coop, however. Another cliché. They have left their home as the young of all fledged moons ago. Not a cliché. Notice that? Recreating my usage of the language. So now you know about the clouds, the sounds, and the location. Well, you don't know all about the location. The stream slices through our land, leaving a pie-shaped piece. I have always called the stream woods. However, that doesn't come to the point of the piece of the pie. That only goes to the main dam, the one that goes all the way across the long marsh to the hill. Beyond that, beyond that, beyond that has never been named. This is the piece of the pie I'm talking about. When I was showing Lori our stream when she fir we first moved here 11 years ago, that would be in 1976, after we, passed, after we passed the main dam, there were small alder bushes along the stream. They were in a field or meadow of grass. The grass doesn't get six feet tall. It only gets about a meter, a meter tall. It's grass in some areas, but around the point of the pie, it's all sedge. Triangular-shaped blades. <coughs> there are thousands of varieties of sedge grass in the world. Along the highway, which is actually just a road, just a county road, from our gravel road, we have a berm of tall cedars. They end at the beginning of the alders at the edge of the meadow. There are, pro there are probably about 50 feet of alders. When they're small like they are now, they can be difficult to walk through. Sedge grass is also difficult to walk through, it seems, as it seems to grow from tall mounds, which can trip you up when you walk through them. So at this point in the pie, the stream comes to the bridge at the road. Sometimes there's a dam just above the bridge, halfway to the beaver felled tree. Now this is the real cement bridge. Halfway to the beaver felled tree, which is, a be is the beaver lodge. I thought I'd hear the water from here, but because it's so low, and I still don't... I thought I'd hear the water from here, but because it's so, it's so low, and still, I don't hear it at all. The bridge is about 200 feet from me. The hammock on the other side of the stream is about 60 feet away, I would guess. There are 10 alder bushes along the edge of the stream. They form a line above the grasses. The sun rises over the woods and dead cedars to the east near the bridge, but not that far to the north. I'm lying in my hammock watching the welcome banner blow in the breeze. It's a light blue, blue sky blue, I guess, background, <clears throat> with a green pastel strip across the bottom. It hosts a white watering can. In it are seven daffodils, five red tulips, 
a cluster of blue grape-like flowers that I forgot the name of that grow low to the ground. I think those are called um, wild hyacinths. On the grass beside the watering can are two yellow tulips and a red one on the side. On the other side is one yellow daffodil and a cluster of the same orange blossoms. A rod through the top is wedged between the logs of the teepee structure, so the banner hangs down and waves slightly in the breeze. <coughs> Some water. It's a wonderful home out here. I feel like it's mine now. This area was always so foreign to me. It floods most of the year. Well, in the spring, anyway. I'll put pallets down later to make it accessible to me all year. In a hammock, you're always up off the ground. I love the looks I get from cars as they drive by. Of course, I'm lying in one hammock. There's a toy person in the other. A scarce crow sort with long black hair. I have my knees bent and my laptop on my lap. I love being here. I think I'll use this teepee more than any other, especially now that it's fall and the searing heat of summer is past. The clouds have opened up above me and to the east. Those that were balls of cloud are now just memory wisps. The moon, half of it anyway, is overhead. The grader just went past. The white-haired man looked as he went slowly by. I saw him in my laptop and waved. He waved back. Nice. That would be my the laptop acting like a mirror. I have my hat hanging on the post, just in case anyone wonders whose teepee this is. My laptop is starting to beep now. I guess I have to finish my two-kilometer walk now. I'm on the last leg of it, of course. I've also got to go build myself my outdoor chair toilet. One can't be out here without one. Eventually, its presence will be missed otherwise. All right, I think that's all I'm going to read to you right now. Did you like that? All right, there's the end button here. Well, you can do this at home. Tallulah just built herself a teepee. And there's somebody else that uh, in Norway, I think, that built one. Anyway, do it. See you later. Bye.